But Excellency, an execution squad doesn't need an officer of my experience to manage it. Especially not with such a weak-looking specimen as that. Nevertheless, I've ordered you to do it. I have an uneasy feeling about this one, and I need someone who I can trust. I'm relying on you to get it done efficiently. So that's how my day started. He had an uneasy feeling, indeed. It's a horrible commission, and as an experienced centurion, I reckoned I'd done my share of them already. So I set out wanting to get it over as soon as possible. But from the beginning, nothing about this day was as set out in orders of the day. The baying mob had largely dispersed, and the Jewish authorities had got their way and were focused on the Passover, as they call it, thinking that they got their threat to their precious status and power out of the way. As soon as I got close to the prisoner, I remembered a story from a fellow officer in Capernaum. This same man, wretched and humiliated now, had willingly gone out of his way to help one of the officer's servants. What had gone wrong for him, I wondered? By this time, I had a report that the prisoner was too weak to carry his own crossbeam. I had a couple of visitors hauled out of the crowd of supporters to carry it for him. People kept pressing to speak to him and to be close to him. It took twice as long as it should to get to the execution site. And when we finally started the horrible business of nailing the three of them on, the other two were a couple of common thieves, the prisoner asked his God to forgive the soldiers. Forgive us? Never, never had I heard anything like that before. Pilate had a notice over the prisoner's head. The King of the Jews. Not much of a king now, I thought. The charge sheet said that the prisoner was to be executed for sedition, a threat to the emperor, but I knew it was really kind some kind of internal Jewish religious squabble that had brought him to this. At the noon hour check, all three prisoners were weakening, and it had become unusually gloomy. Darkness covered the city. A few Jews were hanging around, mocking him and calling out for him to show his godly power and come down. More significantly, I'd let a small group of his supporters, mostly women from the north inside the cordon, and I could hear some odd northern voices in the crowd too. His followers, I guessed, not likely to be any trouble, but we did watch them. It was as if he recognised that the cruelty we were imposing was nothing to do with us. Now, just before the mid-afternoon check, the darkness increased and I saw someone trying to get some liquid up to the prisoner's mouth. The prisoner seemed to straighten, look up, called out, and died. No doubt, sir, at that moment he chose to die. Could it be as if he has achieved his goal? I could not stop myself from speaking out. The prisoner, Jesus, was no ordinary felon, no criminal at all. At that moment I knew he was much more. Everything I had witnessed, every duty I had performed that day, led to this moment for me. Surely he was the Son of God.